Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's extra video. This is my 2019 book stats. So, you guys would have already seen that I did my top 10 favourite books of the year that went up a couple of days ago. Well, I wanted to go into a bit more depth. I wanted to tell you the actual number of books I read in each genre. Bear in mind that some genres are quite sort of wide range, so but a lot of books could be included in this. But, and I will also tell you the top book in it in this genre. Now, these are the books that weren't in my top 10 books of the year, um, but kind of should have been or very close to that. So I really want to get in. Sorry about the background noise. You can tell it's school holidays. And obviously because of the YouTube rules, I have to be really careful with that. But I'm so sorry about this. So I read a, two, a title of 252 books this year, like in 2019. Not a number I expected. A number that quite surprised me. I had my original goal at 100 and I then I upped it to 250 thinking and then I regretted it straight after because I didn't think I'd make it and bear in mind I only just made it I worked my butt off to catch up at the end of the year but I did it and I loved it and I really loved it 2019 was the year I joined you guys I joined you guys in April and it was probably one of the best decisions I've made because I found a family here. Um, obviously I was already sort of involved by w watching other people's videos and Instagram and Twitter and stuff, but joining BookTube myself really was a highlight of 2019. So I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you. When I'm on here, you guys see my figures, you guys see everything that I do, and you see the happy and bad side of me. And um, to be honest, that's just something I've been really finding hard all my life. All my life I've either been really down or really glossy and I've never felt, I found it really hard to be me. I didn't know who I was. I spent a lot of years trying to find who I was. But this last year, coming back on here, reading my books again, I found myself. So when I say about my stats this year, things have changed. That's why the figures I'm guessing next year are going to be a lot different this year. So the 2020 figures hopefully will be a lot different to this year's ones. Anyway, shall I stop rambling and tell you the figures? So as I tell you each figure, I will show you a book that will be my top book for the genre. So first of all, my number of classics was a total of 25 books. This is my first classic of the year, um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now you guys know I love the Bronte sisters. I want to read all of their books this year. And I think even though I didn't put it on my goals list, which will be another video that will be coming up shortly. I can't remember when, but it'll be coming up. Um, but I think I want to try and read as many of the Bronte books as I can this year because I really love them. Jane Eyre is an amazing book. I love the romance in it. I love her. She is a strong protagonist. She's, I think she's my favourite female protagonist um, because she's so strong-willed. She knows what she wants. She goes for it. She has a hard life, but she works her way up. And true love's never far away. And I love the friendships in this. It, it's got a lot of hard-hitting things. There's death in it. There's love. There's a lot of hard-hitting things. Um, I lost my copy of Jane Eyre. But Charlie gave me this copy and it's one I think I may reread this year for the rereaders on. You never know. Might be a sneaky peek of what's going to be to come because I can't. I think I need to reread this again because when I started this at the start of the year, it was when I originally first had gone back to classics. So I had a different, inter different sort of view of it. So I think this year it might be changing my views. But yeah, 25 book classics this year. Not, not in 2019. Not a bad number. Quite happy with that. So... Now I've gone to the number of non-fiction books I've read this year. That's again 25. That'll be a number that will be considerably going up in 2020. I didn't know which one to pick. I've read, like I said, 25 non-fiction books is quite a few. Um, could have gone for an easy one. Could have gone for one of the ones that were in my top 10, but I didn't. I went for one that's on my shelves and that will always be on my shelves. And that's Call the Midwife by Jennifer Worth. This is a TV series that's been... Um, adapted from the books. I've now got the DVD thanks to my gorgeous secret Santa present of this year. I've only got the Thought Series 5, so Series 6, 7, 8, I need to get. They're on my wish list. <gasps> Anyone out there for my birthday? Yes, I would love that one of those, but one of those DVDs. I think that's why it's going to stay on my wish list. But I really love this book. I love the fact it was set in 1950s London. This was actually the time of year that my mum and Simon sort of were quite a similar place to where my mum and my uncle, some of my uncles were born. My mum was born in 1952. Don't shoot me, Mum, for telling the world your age. But I think that's another reason why this is heart hitting. It's close to the phone for me because my nan was there giving birth. What women went through, women that had loads of children. My mum's one of eight. Uh, my nan had quite a hard time in some ways because I know at the end she was really like, she didn't necessarily want eight kids, but she did. And I love each one, every one of my aunts and uncles. 
And back then, women had more children because they didn't have choice. The contraceptive and often weren't all run around those days. So this tackles that. This tackles health issues. This tackles poverty. It tackles class and it tackles love and it tackles the nunnery, sort of the Christian side of it, which is really important to me. I love this book. I gave it away, had to rebuy that. Another one that's had to re-go back on my shelves. But this is one I'm coping. I've read the first in the series and the third. I will be reading the second and fourth this in 2020 with the lovely Simone. So Simone, hurry up and read this one so that we can get on with it. Love this book. Now the next one is historical fiction. This number is higher than I expected, but it needs to go higher, higher even still in 2020. I read a total of 44 books. Now the book that I'm gonna tell you is my top book of this, is one that if I would have recorded my top 20 books of the top 10 books of the year after I'd read this, it would have gone in it and we would have knocked another book off its place. But Burial Rights by Hannah Kemp. This is historical fiction mixed with mystery, mixed with almost non-fiction because it was actually based on a true life story, but there are other characters in it that are that are obviously fictional. This is set in Iceland in, I don't even remember the years, but it was set quite a long time ago. This is about a murder that takes place and three people are accused of the murder. And Agnes is predominantly one of them. And she gets shipped to stay with some a family before she dies, before she gets executed. And this is her story and it's lovely. Um, it's heartbreaking, it's gory at points, but it really is heartbreaking because you see the, the family dynamics. You see, you grow to love characters that you didn't expect to grow to love. And God be warned, the ending's heartbreaking. It, it really has made me close to tears, but this book is beautifully well written. Now, as the time this video is going up, I will be starting to listen to an, Hannah Kent's other book on audiobook because that but this book is so well written I had to read another Hannah Kent book and I know another few of you guys have read it I will let you guys know what it's like but thank you Tom for giving me this book and for buddy reading with me I absolutely loved it now the next genre is one that's another number that needs to go up this year in 2020 and that's Thriller and Mysteries I only read eight now I think that number's going to definitely go up because my goal one of my goals is obviously to read more Thriller and Mysteries I think the mysteries might well be going up because I only just read the, the Sherlock Holmes book um, and that was a surprisingly brilliant book and that's mystery mixed in with mixed in with classics. So if I can kind of get some of those and knock them into the mystery box, it kind of makes me think that I might well like mysteries more. But on the thriller side of it, this book stood out to me and it's one that I kept, that orange. It's a psychological thriller, so I didn't expect to like it. It's gory at points by very badly. It has more twists and turns than you can not shake your finger at, and it's blooming good. It is scary at points. The psychological bit of it really got to me because I find that kind of thriller is quite hard. I like the more sort of courtroom thrillers. I like the more um, family-based thrillers. I think they're kind of quite good. Courtroom thrillers are my, probably my favourite ones. I've got a lot of thrillers on my list to be read this year. Steve Kavanagh books are going to be, certainly be read. That's going to be a sneaky peek for next month. February, I'm going to be reading Steve Kavanagh. Oh, I've just told you a sneaky peek. But yes, thrillers definitely, numbers will definitely go up, and this one's brilliant. Julie gave it to me. I said at the start of this, I read it for, thrill, for the, sort of the thriller of long. Sorry, Nicole. And I loved it. And it was one I didn't expect to like. Um, it's one that's made me realise that I'm stronger than I thought I was, and I can actually read a lot more scary books than I thought I could. But thank you, Julie, for this. I've really enjoyed it. Now, so the genre that's probably got the widest amount of books that could go in it because it's chick lit slash contemporary slash fiction in general because the, the ones that don't fit into the other genres so that's why this number is quite a big number and it's also because it used to be my favorite genre so until probably about half the way through this year i love chick lit the most and that number is 72 books this is a this is a number that needs to go down in 2020 <laughs> never thought i'd hear myself say that to me, Chick Lit now, they really don't stand out on me. Um, what was my favourite author? I, sorry, guys, I used to love page two, and I still will get all of her books. But I get them, and I can give them all away again. It takes a lot for me to keep a Chick Lit, because it means that they've obviously got to be memorable, and I've got to reread them, whereas a lot of Chick Lits, you, they're great, you read, read them quickly, they're soft, they're gentle, they don't stand out at me. But this book really stood out at me, and that was Searching for a Silver Lining by... The lovely Miranda Dickinson. I've read one of her books in December and I really enjoyed it. I've got a lot more that I would like to get through. But I think to me this strikes home because it's about 
a lady, it's about Matilda, who is heartbroken when she falls out with her granddad before, she die, before he dies. And she goes on a mission to find out, with his diary to find out things. Um, and she meets up with a lovely Matty, who's an older lady in the retirement home. And they go on this incredible journey. And you find out secrets from the 1950s again, so it's kind of got a bit of relation to his, history. But it, the relationship between the generations is really important to me. When my dad died, I got really close to my nan. And I found out a lot about her. And I realised that when my other nan was alive, I knew obviously about her, but I didn't know about my dad's mum. And so that, that journey we took when my dad died about getting really close was really important to me. Because at least when my nan died this last year, no, a year or two years ago, you know, whatever. She died in 2017. But when she died, I knew a lot about her because I'd been on this journey. I'd discovered her past. I um, In my job, I work with people of different generations and I love working with the older people because their passion, their strength stands out to me. And that's probably why I love this book so much. It's one I'm going to keep. And again, it could be reread because it's that really sweet and lovely. So that's definitely my favourite chick book. Now, the next one is YA books. So this could be YA dystopian, YA fantasy. <laughs> Quite a lot of YA books are actually on my top 10 that you would have seen. But this is another book that stood out to me. It's a YA dystopian book, Eve of Man by Giovanna Fletcher and Tom Fletcher. Now, Charlie got me to buy this on my birthday when we went on a haul with using my work book vouchers at Waterstones. And she told me to pick this up. Now, again, I've got The Eve of Man 2 and 3 are coming out this year in 2020. I will be getting them. This is one that really stood out to me. I think I buddy read it with Abby from Abby, Abby Mac. Really, really enjoyed this book. And it's about Eve's like the only lady, the only girl left. All the women, all the children are dying. All the women have died. It's only men that are left, really. So Eve's basically been put in this tower. She's been so-called protected. But when she's, when she's sort of faced to meet this man of her destiny, she's supposed to meet this great guy. They set her up to procreate really and things kind of take a different turn it's quite dystopic quite dark at points quite scary at points but it's one i really enjoyed the dystopic side of it like is quite heartbreaking some of the things that happened in this were really heartbreaking but i really really enjoyed this book and it's one that really stood out to me i think it's one like i said one of my favorites although like i said when it comes to YA books a lot of them were in my top 10 you can tell i like the YA genre don't can't you now the next one, obviously closely connected, not one I can talk about very much because of the, obviously the YouTube rules. You guys know I had to include a BFG, the Royal Dahl book, the BFG. No, not BFG, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I picked this one. <laughs> I love the BFG as well. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Those of you who know me, know my gorgeous sister Charlie from Charlie Brook, um, my best friend in the world. Um, so obviously because it's the Charlie thing, it's related to Chocolate Factory. It's about a boy with his family. It's the one I could read about a million times. Mia's borrowing this again. So I've got to give it back to her so she can carry on reading it. But it's one that I've read about a million times and I loved it. Definitely my best kid. That, that's my children slash middle grade slash... Again, another book that was in my top ten. Now I'm going to go on to a, the poet, poetry book. The, I, I've just realised, I only told, I haven't told you. I've read one horror, by the way. YA books, I read 25 books. So that's 25. I've read the same number of YA books as I have historical fiction. No, classics and non-fiction. That's freaky, the fact they're exactly the same. No, sorry. I've read top... Uh, that's my old figures. I've read 27 YA books. So YA is just about beaten non-fiction and classics. How the hell? I don't know whether that... I don't know how I feel about that figure. Now, children's books, I read 19. They're easy. I read them at bedtime. I like them. Don't need to go into any more detail. Now the next, now the last three genres are ones that are the lowest rated probably genres. The genres that need to go up quite a bit. First one's poems and I only read seven poems, poetry books. I find poetry books hard because they could be taken in so many different areas and I struggle to rate them. Sorry, I just bit my tongue. I only read seven but the one that I read that I would like to get, get actually on my own shelves that Charlie lent to me and that's one I need to have my own copy of it. Another book to go on my wish list. Is Wild Embers, Poems of Rebellion and Fire and Beauty by Nikita Gill. That is my first poetry book that Charlie lent to me. And yes, Charlie, I would like to borrow it again. It's beautiful. It's female based. It's inspiring. It's, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't describe to you. Out of all the books, that poetry books that Charlie's given me, Charlie lent to me. That's the one that stood out. And that's my first one she lent to me. But it's one I want to borrow again. Looking at my books, I've got a Khalid Hussini book down there. 
on the shelves down there that Simone bought me that's a poetry book. I think I need to be reading that. And I need to certainly get the poetry books numbers up gradually. But I need to find some good ones, guys. So can you please give me hints about some good ones? The next genre is fantasy. Now, again, I could put certain books in YA or fantasy. And I put this one as an adult fantasy. And that is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I need to read a lot more of Marissa Meyer books this year. I want to read all of the... Cinder, you know, those books, those books for Cinder and Scarlet and all that book. I need to finish all that series. That's fantasy. I need to read that this year. I've got quite a few other Marissa Meyer books I want to read this year. And I've got some other fantasy books. But So fantasy is another number. I only read six, but that number is certainly going up. I'm starting the year reading a fantasy book. And I'm probably looking at my, tw looking at my February books. I don't know what any more fantasy on the shelves for this month. But I'm going to mix them up. I'm going to certainly up this. This is a surprising book. This is my favourite fantasy book because it's actually, it was near as dull my, my biggest surprise of 2019 because I read it in 2017 and I hated it. Got halfway through it, put it down, didn't understand it. Charlie was like, so when I got into booktube again, I was like, I kind of need to push myself. So I said to Charlie, oh, maybe I should try a game with this. So it's actually a reread. Ooh, could have gone on that and reread this one. Um, but I reread really it with Clint, which of course made it better in itself because I love Clint. And it was absolutely blooming amazing. You guys know Heartless is about the story of the who was the lady who would turn out to be the Queen of Hearts, which is the gorgeous. So it's the long before Alice fell into rabbit hole. The Queen of Hearts was a girl. I can't remember her name in this. I really wish I could. She's gorgeous, and it's about you've obviously got Mary. Oh, you've got a, a sort of Lady Marianne. You've got the Cheshire Cat. You've got. The, the rabbit you've got some gorgeous gorgeous books oh my goodness it's it's sort of like so at the start you've got this page this page that says i pictured myself pictured to myself the queen of hearts as a sort of embodiment of an ungovernable passion a blind and aimless bit of fury so she turns into quite an angry lady but the start of this book she her name is catherine and she's brilliant and she's this is before our heart gets changed and oh, I can't describe you. It's another one I'm keeping. I loved it. My first Marissa Meyer book and it's one that made me want to read more and more of her books. Guys, let me know what other Marissa Meyer books I should be reading because I love this so much. Next one are graphic novels. I only read two graphic novels this year. Um, again, 2020, I've got a one graphic novel that Charlie's lent to me that I'm reading in February. Well, I've got some previews, but this is the one that stood out to me. Book club. There is Debbie Tan's other book, The Quiet Girl in an Introverted World. Um, I could relate to that quite a lot. I love that one. Um, but this one is one that I love the most. I think it, it's probably my top one because it's about book club. It's about people who love books. It doesn't have necessarily a storyline, but it is just absolutely beautiful. The gorgeous Simone gave me this she said because it was after one of my operations and she got me a little gift for to, to, for things that's read at home and i love this book my best graphic novel of the year anyway should i tell you what my biggest surprise of the year was this is not my favorite book of the year but a book that i didn't expect to love and a book that's completely changed me and i'm gonna find it because i had it right near me here we go this is the handmaid's tale I didn't think I would like this. This is a classic dystopic book and it's so hard hitting. Everyone warned me and I didn't think I would like this. So when I saw this in a charity shop, I thought, it's all over booktube. I thought, I've got to read it. It's, it's one of the oldest books out there and I need to read it. I loved it. I flew through it. I've already read it with Linda. I think I kind of sped through it a bit quicker than she did. There's about this woman of the Gilead. Oh, Fred only has one function to breed and it, the women in this place, they have different functions everyone in this has a different function a different role and a different sort of it's almost like a league table of what, what different jobs they are so and this is really important it's quite a dystopic book but it was written in 1984 which is the year that chris and my sister vicky were born and the way the world's going some of this stuff happens the infertility issues happening in the west and that's quite scary it's quite a close time for me i'm very lucky to have my two children but this book is amazing i'm definitely going to be reading the testaments in 2020 but guys, this is my, that's my wrap up, my book sort of stats, my 2019 book stats. If you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring on my ding-a-ling. And I hope you all have a great 2020. Bye-bye.